this little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. I'm Bishop William Byrne inviting you to radiate the light of Christ by making a gift to the annual Catholic Appeal. The ministries and agencies supported with your generosity help thousands of our neighbors throughout Western Massachusetts. The annual Catholic Appeal unites us in the mission to help meet the physical, spiritual, and sacramental needs of our brothers and sisters and to grow our church. Please donate to the annual Catholic Appeal. Join me in radiating the light of Christ and be a force for hope and love in the world on behalf of the people we serve. Thank you. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Good morning and welcome to the Chalice of Salvation, coming to you from the Holy Spirit Chapel here at St. Michael's Cathedral. I'm your Chalice host, Passionist Brother Jeremy Scanlon. Today we celebrate the Feast of the Transfiguration, remembering a day when Jesus was transfigured before the eyes of his closest disciples. On that day, the Lord's glory shone through him like the sun, his whole being shining with light. We recall that on the first day of creation, God transformed the world with light. Let us join Peter, James, and John on this holy mountain, where Jesus, who transforms every darkness in our lives to light. Helping us to better understand this feast day is our Mass presider, Father Francis Riley, pastor of St. Jerome's Parish Community in Holyoke. Our music ministry this morning will be provided by Vinnie Gaboni and Donna Kennedy. Father Riley will offer this Mass intention today for Blessed Franz and Francesca Jägerstetter, requested by Pax Christi Western Mass. Pax Christi's central belief in fostering peace and nonviolence discipleship in our world, certainly something that we can use more of. Members of the group are joining us here in the chapel this morning, and we do welcome one and all. In our Chalice Preacher today, we'll learn more about Pax Christi from Steve Katanik, who joined him for a day-long retreat this past spring, asking you to please stay tuned for that. And as we celebrate our Mass, we send our best wishes to those celebrating those special birthdays and anniversaries today and throughout the coming week. Birthday greetings to our former Bishop, Archbishop Mitchell Rosansky. We send our prayerful best wishes to him as he continues to shepherd the people of the Archdiocese of St. Louis. And friends, as we do each week, we are mindful of all those who are ill or homebound, especially our viewers who are watching this telecast from your hospital rooms, nursing homes, and extended care facilities. Please know that you're always in our prayers. And as always, we will place the names that have been sent in to us by you, our Chalice viewers, into our Book of Remembrance this very morning. We pray for the souls of all the faithful departed. May they rest in the peace of our risen Lord. We now turn to our music ministers for our opening hymn of gathering as we greet our celebrant, Father Francis Riley, and together celebrate the Feast of Transfiguration. You shall cross the barren desert, but you shall not die of thirst. You shall wander far in safety, though you do not know the way. You shall speak your words in foreign lands, and all will understand. You shall see the face of God and
If you pass the raging waters in the sea, you shall not drown. If you walk amid the burning flames, you shall not be harmed. If you stand before the power of hell and death is at your side, know that I am with you through it all. Be not afraid. I go before you. And I will give you rest. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, we gather today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Today we celebrate the Feast of the Transfiguration of the Lord Jesus. We remember that Jesus took Peter, James, and John up a high mountain and he was transfigured before them and appeared to Jesus, Moses, and Elijah. Of course, Moses was the representatives of the Ten Commandments and Elijah was the representative of the prophets. Jesus came to fulfill the law and the prophets. Today also we gather with the members of Pax Christi, the international peace organization, especially in our diocese, and we celebrate the mass, the annual mass in, in remembrance of the, in loving memory of blessed Franz and Franziska Jägerstetter. And we'll talk more about how Franz in his own way was an instrument of peace. And he went countercultural to the time in which he lived around the time of the Second World War in Nazi Germany. So as we prepare to celebrate how we are all called to be transfigured, changed, to be more like Jesus, we focus on the words of the Gospel today where God tells us to listen to Jesus in every way, in all that we do. So as we prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us call to mind the times we have not listened to Jesus we have forgotten that he is always with us and ask God for pardon and peace. Lord Jesus, you always speak to us in the silence of our hearts. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you raise us to new life by the power of your spirit. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you alone have the words of everlasting life and you speak them to each one of us Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to eat everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. And let us pray. O God, who in the glorious transfiguration of your only begotten Son confirmed the mysteries of faith by the witness of the fathers and wonderfully prefigured our full adoption to sonship, grant, we pray, to your servants that listening to the voice of your beloved Son, we may merit to become co-heirs with him who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. As I watched, thrones were set up, and the Ancient One took his throne. His clothing was snow bright, and the hair on his head as white as wool. His throne was flames of fire with wheels of burning fire. A surging stream of fire flowed out from where he sat. Thousands upon thousands were ministering to him, and myriads upon myriads attended him. The court was convened, and the books were open. As the visions during the night continued, I saw one like a son of man coming on the cloud of heaven. When he reached the ancient one and was presented before him, the one like a son of man received dominion, glory, and kinship. All peoples, nations, and languages serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not be taken away. His kingship shall not be destroyed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. are round about him. Justice and judgment are the foundation of his throne. The Lord is King, the Most High, over all the earth. The mountains melt like the wax before the Lord before the Lord of all the earth. The heavens proclaim his justice. All people see his glory. The Lord is King, the Most High, over all the earth. Because you, O Lord, are the Most High over all the earth, exalted far above all gods. The Lord is King, the Most High, over all the earth. A reading from the second letter of St. Peter. Beloved, we did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we have been eyewitnesses of his majesty, for he received honor and glory from God the Father when that unique declaration came to him from the majestic glory. This is my son, my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice come from heaven while we were with him on the holy mountain. Moreover, we possess the prophetic message that is altogether reliable. 
you will do well to be attentive to it. As to a lamp shining in a dark place until day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus took Peter, James, and his brother John and led them up a high mountain by themselves, and he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as wool. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, conversing with him. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud cast a shadow over them. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, this is my beloved son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell prostrate and were very much afraid. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise and do not be afraid. And when the disciples raised their eyes, they saw no one else but Jesus alone. As they were coming down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, Do not tell the vision to anyone until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Today, as you know, is August 6th, and it's the Feast of the Transfiguration, where Jesus took Peter, James, and John up to a high mountain by themselves, and he was transfigured before them. And what does that mean but that his face became sh shining like the sun and his clothes became dazzling white. Today I'm wearing this vestment here. that I, It's a favorite vestment of mine because it speaks of the mystery of the cross and the crown of Christ. The cross, however, is here characterized as the gold cross and the golden crown. But we remember the cross of wood that Jesus had to carry on which he died and the crown of thorns which he was crowned with. But that is a sign of the kingdom of God that we live for and that we look forward to. And today also we gather with the group of the Pax Christi, the peace of Christ, the group of, it's, a un, it's an international group of peacemakers and peace people who appreciate the peace of Christ, that Christ's peace might be the way that we live in the world. The point is that we are in the gospel today given the, uh, the command by God himself to listen to Jesus. And we're all trying to listen to Jesus. Never forget what he tells us to do and who we are in his sight. 
And so listening to Jesus is a lifetime effort and we believe that we have that gift and grace to be able to listen to Jesus and do whatever he tells us to do and live by his word. As we heard God in the gospel today saying, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased, listen to him. And when the disciples heard this, they fell prostrate on the ground for they were very much afraid. Jesus came and touched them and he said, rise and do not be afraid. We have to remember that Jesus comes to each one of us and whenever we are afraid or whenever we are confused and he touches us not only by his word but by the blessed sacrament of the altar when he comes to us in his body and blood, soul and divinity and he asks us just to not be afraid, to rise and not to be afraid. We all know that song, You Raise Me Up, that is popular by Josh Groban and he says, you raise me up so that I can stand on mountains. He raises us up so that we can stand. Jesus raises us up so that we can stand on mountains with him because without him we cannot be strong or we cannot be people of God and people of faith reflecting the living and loving presence of God in our lives. So we pray that we would be attentive to the word of God, the word of Jesus, and to do whatever he tells us to do. Remembering that Jesus comes to us and touches us and listening to Jesus, we make decisions about the way we're called to live in our lives. And so as we celebrate the yearly mass, remembering Franz Jägerstetter, who was uh, uh, an Austrian soldier and so in 1943 he refused to uh, fight in the, Na the Nazi Germany army and he was taking a stand because he listened to Jesus in his heart and he knew the consequences of refusing to fight for a cause that he knew was just wrong because it wasn't according to the way of the gospel of Jesus. And a lot of things uh, happen in our lives where we have to know when to say yes and when to say no. It's significant too, as we celebrate on this August 6th, 2023, that it was on August uh, 6th, uh, 1943, that he was uh, beheaded and sentenced and, and, and persecuted and uh, that he died for his faith. So it's a long time ago, but this day also reminds us of the, the reality of war in our world. And we're praying constantly for, for peace in our world, especially in the Ukraine. But it was on August 6, 1945, that the bomb was dropped on Hiroshima in Nagasaki on August 9th, so that there's still continued war in our world and we pray for peace. Peace not only in our world, but peace in our homes, peace in our neighborhoods, peace in our families and everywhere. We pray that listening to Jesus and knowing that we are called to be people of God, people of peace, that we might know the difference in our lives in all things through Christ our Lord. At this time, let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried 
and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God of light and love, we lift our prayers to you. And now we invite Sister Jane Morrissey to pray the prayer of the faithful with us. Excuse my noisy cane. <laughs> Our response today will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For all victims of violence, that they may be held tenderly in your loving embrace, O oh God, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all survivors of violence, that they be comforted by your healing presence and by our solidarity with them, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all families and loved ones of those who have suffered from violence, that they may be strengthened by the understanding and generosity of those who love them, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those traumatized by the threat of violence, that they may have access to the services and support needed to heal and to thrive, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our neighborhoods, that we seek and create alternatives to violence by living as radical communities, hospitable to all, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For children and youth, teachers and counselors, that schools be transformed to havens for the principles and practice of nonviolent love, we pray. Lord, I hear our prayer. For all of those led by despair or fear to build arsenals or do nothing, that they may experience the love, trust, and security they need to disarm their hearts and homes and create in their stead heavens of peace, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For legislators and policymakers, that they may have the courage to resist the powerful evil forces trying to maintain the status quo of domestic, regional, national, and international threat and violence and take initiative to move our world back from the brink, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered in memory of Franz and Franziska Jägerstetter and their children, for the courage and commitment to give bold and prophetic witness like this humble Austrian family and take action against violence, and that our efforts bear fruit, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those whose names will be entered into our book of remembrance today, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the intentions that we now mention in the silence of our hearts. Provident God, in Jesus, you show us that your will is to save. Give to us, your people, the boldness to desire a place at your table, the courage to drink the cup of suffering, and the grace to find in prophetic service the joy that you promise. We ask this through Jesus, your Son, and the saints who follow in his footsteps. May their light be with us all the days of our life. 
we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours and our lives will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his church. Sanctify, O Lord, we pray, these offerings here made to celebrate the glorious transfiguration of your only begotten Son, and by his radiant splendor cleanse us from the stains of sin, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he revealed his glory in the presence of chosen witnesses and filled with the greatest splendor that bodily form which he shares with all humanity, that the scandal of the cross might be removed from the hearts of his disciples, and that he might show how in the body of the whole church is to be fulfilled what so wonderfully shone forth first in its head. And so, with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty without end, we acclaim. Holy, 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 You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, 
for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of Jesus' death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. Especially we offer this Mass in loving memory of blessed Franz and Franziska Jägerstetter and all those who have died in your mercy in the hope of the resurrection. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. Jesus taught us to call God our Father and to take up our cross daily and follow him. And so we pray as he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Jesus, the bread of life, come down from heaven. If we eat this bread, even though we die, we will live forever. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. Those unable to receive Holy Communion, those in our TV audience, we say this spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to possess you within my soul. Since I am unable at this moment to receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Transfigure us, O oh Lord, transfigure us, O oh Lord. Break the chains that bind us, spread your healing word. And where you lead, we follow, transfigure us, O oh Lord. Down from heights of glory into the depths below, the love of God self-emptied the love of God to show. You light the path before us, the way that we must go. Transfigure us, O oh Lord, transfigure us, O oh Lord. Break the chains that bind us, speak your healing word, and where you lead will follow. Transfigure us, O oh Lord. Light for those in darkness, the hungry have their fill. Glad tidings for the humble, the healing of all ills. In these we glimpse your glory, God's promise is fulfilled. Transfigure us, O oh Lord, transfigure us, O oh Lord. Break the chains that bind us, speak your healing word, and where you lead will follow, transfigure us, O oh Lord. Let us pray. May the heavenly nourishment we have received, O Lord, we pray, transform us into the likeness of your Son, 
whose radiant splendor you willed to make manifest in his glorious transfiguration, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be And thank you. In celebration of the 100th anniversary of St. Francis of Assisi Parish in Belchertown, a very special concert is scheduled for Sunday, August 13th. Dan Kane and friends will be performing at St. Francis of Assisi Parish from 5 to 6.30 p.m. The church is located at 24 Jabish Street, and the concert is free and open to the public. Our family is made up of every race. We are young and old, rich and poor, men and women, sinners and saints. Our family has spanned the centuries and the globe. With God's grace, we started hospitals to care for the sick. We established orphanages and helped the poor. We are the largest charitable organization on the planet, bringing relief and comfort to those in need. We educate more children than any other scholarly or religious institution. We developed the scientific method and laws of evidence. We founded the college system. We defend the dignity of all human life and uphold marriage and family. Cities were named after our revered saints who navigated a sacred path before us. Guided by the Holy Spirit, we compiled the Bible. We are transformed by sacred scripture and sacred tradition, which have consistently guided us for 2,000 years. We are the Catholic Church. With over one billion in our family, sharing in the sacraments and fullness of the Christian faith, for centuries we have prayed for you and our world, every hour of every day, whenever we celebrate the Mass. Jesus himself laid the foundation for our faith when he said to Peter, the first pope, you are rock, and upon this rock I will build my church. For over 2,000 years, we've had an unbroken line of shepherds, guiding the Catholic Church with love and truth in a confused and hurting world. And in this world filled with chaos, hardship, and pain, it's comforting to know that some things remain consistent, true, and strong, our Catholic faith, and the eternal love that God has for all creation. If you've been away from the Catholic Church, we invite you to take another look. Visit catholicscomehome.org today. Ours is one family, united in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We are Catholic. Welcome home. Hi, Mom. What are you doing today? Providence Place, owned by the Sisters of Providence, an ideal rental setting for retirees to continue their active, independent lifestyles. We have bright one and two bedroom apartments, a magnificent chapel with daily mass, 
restaurant-style dining, and wellness and entertainment programs. Call for a tour, 413-534-9700. Call me when you're not so busy. Peace is a central tenant of the gospel mandate and in turn, a tenant of Pax Christi organization. The goal of this organization, spring retreat held at St. Thomas Parish in Palmer, was to provide an opportunity for members to rediscover the power of nonviolent discipleship in a turbulent war. Steve Katonic has the story. On April 22nd, St. Thomas the Apostle Parish Center in Palmer was the site for the Pax Christi, Massachusetts 2023 Spring Retreat. The retreat was led by Dr. Phil Herrick, author of a new book entitled Living in the Company of Jesus, a practical, scripture-based guide to deepening your journey within his nonviolent kingdom. Pax Christi is the international Catholic peace movement that began in 1945 by a group of French and German Catholics who wanted to reconcile and begin the process of healing after both world wars. Pax Christi USA was founded in 1972 by two Catholic bishops. Mike Moran is the editor of the Pax Christi Massachusetts newsletter. Our mission is really to live the peace of Christ in the world by um, a working to make the world safer from all forms of violence and injustice. Today, Pax Christi has chapters in over 60 countries worldwide, with 15 in Massachusetts, three in Western Mass. We go through a process that we call pray, study, and act. So we try to base all our work on the spiritual grounding of the gospel of Jesus and scripture. But we draw from the social teaching of the Catholic Church as well. Some of the issues Pax Christi has worked on national and international levels are gun violence, anti-racism, climate change, immigration, the death penalty, and the abolishment of nuclear weapons. Pax Christi often partners locally with other groups, such as Springfield's Campaign Nonviolence, demonstrating in support of certain legislative initiatives. Dr. Herrick has served on the Pax Christi Massachusetts Board for 30 years and recently became co-coordinator. He's a longtime educator and holds a doctorate in social justice education. The purpose of the book is to help others to discuss and to help build Jesus' nonviolent kingdom. And we're answering Pope Francis's call to make active nonviolence a way of our life. Herrick's book is a collaboration with his late older brother, Father Simon Herrick, a Jesuit priest who was a university professor, theologian, author, peace activist, and pacifist. Father Herrick founded Voices in the Wilderness, which campaigned in the 1990s to end U.S. imposed sanctions against Iraq. I'm a priest. Children are dying. I belong here, not with my family back or my friends back in the United States. I belong where there is difficulty, where there is problem. Father Herrick's delegation defied the sanctions by bringing medicine and gifts for the malnourished Iraqi children. A gifted orator, Father Herrick gave over 2,000 lectures against war and co-founded the Marquette University Center for Peacemaking. He was committed to Jesus' message of nonviolent love of friends and enemies. And he put together a number of his very, very popular homilies and scriptural reflections. But before he got a chance to finish the book, he got very sick. Father Herrick died in 2019 at the age of 71 after a long bout with a rare form of dementia. For the book, Phil organized his brother's rough draft and wrote responses to each of Simon's 19 spiritual reflections. It's a very divisive time and we have a lot of issues and problems, but Jesus has a very clear way of trying to help us with practical messages. Both Simon and I offer very practical ways of empowering others through scripture-based practice. Dr. Herrick adopted his book to the Pax Christi Gathering, utilizing Ignatian spiritual exercises. After breaking up into discussion groups and applying relaxation techniques, Herrick read selected gospel passages. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. It is a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. Herrick asked attendees to put themselves into the gospel as a participant. After journaling their thoughts, members discussed the passage, reflecting on their personal experience. Herrick offered his own thoughts on the scripture and his brother's reflection. Our woundedness does not need to disappear for us to be compassionate with ourselves and to be loved by God. The retreat was available virtually, and people responded via Zoom throughout the day. Today's retreat is a way for us to both look inwards 
to get in touch with Jesus, who's our friend, and then to see where Jesus might be directing us outwards as his disciples. Pat Farone served as co-coordinator of Pax Christi, Massachusetts for 20 years. She's been involved with nonviolence issues for over 45 years. Sometimes we become so activist that we just kind of plow ahead doing the next thing that appears on the horizon. So taking time to reevaluate where we're going and pulling in other ideas and sharing with other people. And being able to be honest, too, is important. Farone brought a banner she made with other PAX Christie members on which they stitched the names of Americans who have died or were injured as a result of the 169 mass shootings this year. Farone hopes PAX Christie members use the banner as an effective tool during peaceful protests against gun violence. Father Rocco Pupolo said a goal of the group is to increase membership among youth. Many of our Catholic colleges have ROTC, and we're trying to encourage the campus ministers to offer an alternative narrative that there could be nonviolence that our people can be engaged in. Father Herrick's last public retreat was at a Pax Christi conference in the same parish center 10 years ago to the day. So there's a kind of a symmetry, and I'm glad to be able to you know, bring my voice to his voice to God's voice. In Palmer, I'm Steve Kiltonic. Thanks, Steve. My sincere thanks to Father Francis Riley, pastor of St. Jerome's Parish Community in Holyoke, for celebrating our Mass this morning. We also thank the members of Pax Christi Western Mass for being with us. A special shout out to the guide dog training, Catherine, who joined us as well. She will certainly be a blessing to her future companion. Our thanks as well to Vinnie Gavoni and Donna Kennedy for sharing their musical talents with us this morning. And friends, please don't forget that in a few weeks on Friday, August the 25th, the Faith on Fire Catholic Rally will again be taking place at Sacred Heart Parish in Feeding Hills. The evening will feature talks from Bishop Byrne, Father David Afiero, and Father Anthony Grimlick. This is in addition to praise and worship music, reconciliation, and Eucharistic procession. Again, Faith on Fire, August 25th, starting at 6 p.m. at Sacred Heart Parish Community in Feeding Hills. And we ask you to join us again next Sunday as we welcome Monsignor Christopher Conley, rector here at St. Michael's Cathedral as our Mass Recider, as we celebrate the 19th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Again, that's next Sunday at 10 a.m. for your Child of Salvation, your weekly spiritual connection. Sending all in our viewing community our love and prayers. God bless. See you next Sunday.